where I'm at on the whole CSS tricks thing. If you're not already familiar with Chris Coyer, he's the creator of a lot of really important things in modern web dev, including CodePen, and more importantly, in this instance, CSS tricks. If somehow you're not familiar with the single most important website for most web devs, CSS tricks changed everything. This site taught us so much stuff. I used to joke I would get the CSS tricks Flexbox URL tattooed because I was there so much. Like Chris and team's work on this site helped us modernize our CSS and styles to a level where it, it was night and day. The amount I learned from this particular blog post is hilarious. They even sold it as a poster because of how good it was. Oh, they're not even selling it. You could download the high-res poster for free. Had really good diagrams and comparisons to help you better understand how the container behaviors worked and how the child containers worked. Just detailed piece for piece with really good descriptions and diagrams. This was essential. I would not have understood Flexbox if it wasn't for this page. I learned so much from CSS tricks. I still reference it regularly, but it's kind of fallen to shit. Like it's just, it's fallen apart. And the reason why is because it was sold. In March of 2022, CSS tricks was sold to DigitalOcean and it's been a notoriously not great acquisition. I can't find the tweet I was looking for, but I just found these two from Adam Rackus. Never forget DigitalOcean straight murdered a beloved dev resource, CSS tricks. They bought it then abandoned it and aren't giving it back. Fuck them. I'll use Heroku before I ever touch anything of theirs. People calling out, anybody know what happened with CSS Tricks? I know it was purchased, but it seems kind of strange to go totally dark for such a time. Funny story, DigitalOcean bought them, laid off all of the staff working on CSS Tricks, and is now just sitting on the site. I'll go back to Heroku before I ever use them for a fucking thing. <sighs> this kind of breaks my heart, because I was not this anti-DigitalOcean in the past. In fact, I'm going to show you guys something that's really important to me. The DigitalOcean posts for how to create a Minecraft server. Back in the day, this is, yeah, this is the one I probably read. Status deprecated. Cool. I don't care. This article is how I built my first Minecraft server. Might have been a slightly older one, but I bring this up because DigitalOcean got me more into code by writing articles like this and helping me not just click a button and spin up a Minecraft server, but actually setting it up myself. And even though I didn't use DigitalOcean at the time, it got me in and it got me more familiar with their product, knowing they host servers and in the future I could use them for it. This article and things like it were a huge part of their top of funnel. It's how users discovered DigitalOcean and started using it. And as they wanted to compete more with something like Vercel and less with something like Heroku, because Heroku died and Vercel didn't, they realized they needed to pivot more into the web direction. Part of how they planned to do that was using CSS tricks as a similar lever to what they had built here with their previous documentation and tutorials. The same way they were able to build a thing that got me to figure out what DigitalOcean was, they wanted to build a thing to help like my audience figure out what DigitalOcean is. And CSS tricks seemed like a shortcut there. Turns out it wasn't, and I want to talk about why. Well, I want to talk about Chris Coyer's experience as to why. It was March of 2022 when I sold CSS tricks to DigitalOcean, so it's been just about two years now. This was me and my wife's thinking. Point one, the negotiated sale price was fair. Point two, they're a big company, a public one even, with tons of resources, and their clear stated strategy was to invest in content and community because that's where the top of funnel is, and it's good for their business. They didn't just talk this way, they were obviously investing in content and community. There's a chance CSS Tricks could have become better. Again, I agree with this, especially with their history of investing in content as a top of funnel, this makes sense. They were already decently well known for good content in DevOps and backend, but were missing solid front end content. Filling this gap made sense. Yes, checks out. I swear I didn't pre-read this. They'd be able to rip the ads off the site. There would only be one ad, use DigitalOcean. I'm no advertising hater, it's always been good to me, but the thought of CSS Tricks as a clean ad-free site was appealing. They'd keep on Jeff, the lead editor, if he wanted it. He did and they did. I was way, way, way too busy to run the CSS Tricks site and also co-run CodePen, and it was hard on me. As someone who runs a YouTube channel in multiple companies and also does investing, fully sympathize. After the sale, things seemed kind of fine for a bit, and that was encouraging. It was cool seeing new voices publishing new work I had nothing to do with. Then started to limp, using up the momentum that it already had. A year later, they fired Jeff, along with everyone else working on content and community. That was the real torpedo. It seems DigitalOcean got excited when the whole industry started doing huge layoffs, and they followed suit and slurped up the profits. The necessary directional change was, screw content and community. A month after that, the last article was published on CSS Tricks, an overview of past keys, which will now apparently be on the homepage forever. A very strange bit of content to emblazon on the tombstone of the site. They also added a cookie button that looks like a fourth grader designed it and started publishing every blog post as a guide. Yeah. How do I feel about all that? Well, I'm not stoked, but I'm an adult and I knew the risks. I sold the site. They now control it. They can do whatever they want with it. They could replace the entire site with an H1 tag that says Chris Coyer smells like donkeys, and that would be within their rights. 
I've heard from plenty of people who are pissed. Some are pissed at me, sell out, yada, yada. But I'm actually fairly pleased that the site is still online, relatively untouched, and with everybody's bylines, including my own, intact. That's a better outcome than Scotch.io, purchased from Chris Sev, which was neutered and ultimately turned off. That's a much more inglorious ending, and I hoped it would never happen to CSS Tricks. Hopefully that doesn't happen, although during my three-month consulting period, I know they were very interested in porting the content to their own internal static site-generated system. As someone who's built a lot of SSG-powered sites and also a lot of WordPress sites, all I can say is that CSS Tricks is WordPressy as hell, and I cannot possibly imagine a conversion that maintains any level of quality as being worth the effort. A lot more people are pissed at DigitalOcean, people saying they'll never use them again, and are generally upset that they'd take such a useful asset and do nothing with it, a void in the industry that doesn't sit right. But does any of this negative sentiment actually affect DigitalOcean meaningfully? I have no clue. It can't help. But I'm sure if it was that big of a deal, they'd prioritize fixing it somehow. Seems like it's more of an, oh well, you win some, you lose some. Shrug it off. <sighs> it's almost certainly not acting as the strong top of funnel player that they were originally hoping for. It's kind of funny that the goal of the purchase was to introduce more web devs to DigitalOcean in a positive way. And let me know in the comments if this is the first time you've heard about DigitalOcean, because I'm sure it is for a lot of you, and it's certainly not in a positive light. Obligatory, if you're looking for something like them, Railway seems pretty cool. You also have Render and Fly, and if you just want to host a website, I'm obviously a big Rissell fanboy. Anyways, back to the article. I bet you could probably guess all of that, or piece it together from things that are publicly said. But what you probably didn't know is that I tried to get it back. Oh, that's a huge twist. Okay, strap in, boys. I got an email from a fella a while back who is now a VP of content and community at DigitalOcean who came over from the Cloudways acquisition. I think ownership of CSS Tricks kind of fell in his lap after some internal shifts. Unlike his predecessors, he didn't have any hangups about just talking directly to me. What he originally wanted was to just learn what it's going to take to get spun back up in producing again. A return on investment is what he was after, understandably. I was as frank with him as I am with anyone. It's going to take a lot. They would need a new lead editor. And you might be able to see how people might be squeamish about the role with the last one publicly axed not long ago. Maybe that person knows WordPress development pretty well. If not, ideally, you have someone that knows WordPress pretty well because the site uses everything. CSS, oh boy, I did not. Like, I knew they were on WordPress. I did not know they called themselves a poster child WordPress site. If I need to make more WordPress content, let me know in the comments. As I was saying, and maybe that person knows how to wrangle up really good front-end specific writers. If you find that magical person that's a developer, writer, community builder, and site running editor, it's going to be expensive. More likely, you got to build a team again, and it's going to take them a while to get things going. So your investment gets deeper and deeper while the return remains unclear. This got me thinking. Maybe a little braggadocious here, but... I'm basically the perfect person for the job. Let's just say the most perfect person on earth for this job, lol. But I'm not even sure I'd want to do it again, and I have no idea if they would even want me to. I definitely don't want to do free consulting work on it. So I took my big swing. Here's my best and wildest idea. I run CSS Tricks again myself. CSS Tricks is big and complicated. Anybody walking in the door alone is going to have a serious learning curve just in getting comfortable and operating the basics. I already know every inch of it. I get people reading again. I get people writing again. I get people excited again. I erase any bad mojo against DigitalOcean, fix that brand damage, get people saying they want to use DigitalOcean instead of saying they never will again. I wonder how many of these are Adam Rackus. Adam, Stolinski, and Ockroot. At least I called one of them being Adam. Then we do the most valuable possible thing for DigitalOcean. Get content on there that helps people know about and do things on DigitalOcean. There are some big wins there. Astro is big right now in front end. Why isn't DigitalOcean on the list? Let's get this article written and linked up. We can make a special section in the site that is just DigitalOcean content, making it easy to browse and find stuff. Then we can do the second most valuable thing that is possible, move the hosting to DigitalOcean and have it be a living, breathing endorsement of DigitalOcean being a great place to host a WordPress site. Now we're back in action. Why would I do that? You transfer ownership of CSS back to me. Why would you do that? You're trying to break even on it. That means you aren't spending any more money and time. You're just extracting marketing, branding, and conversion value out of money already spent. You don't have to spend any more time on this personally or institutionally. Any other internal costs are gone. And most importantly, the community will love it. The trick is in the details. We'd get to an agreement on what has to happen for it to work. For example, no other web host can be advertised on the site for X time, etc. I'd call that a big swing anyway. I'll just take it back, please, and thank you. But I feel like I made the case okay, and that it's not completely crazy. Crickets for a while. A few back and forth emails like, still thinking about this later, and the conclusion is that the fella basically doesn't have the conviction to push it within the halls at DigitalOcean. Understandable, really. I wouldn't want to be handed a huge golden nugget by my boss and then asked for a meeting and be like, I think we should give it back to the leprechaun. That's a pretty great quote. 
When I pitched that, I wasn't even 100% sure I wanted it, mainly for stress reasons, but I'm sure I could have figured out a way to run a more minimal ship with reduced stress and the site would be in a much more pleasant place. Anyway, if you want to know some more basic information about past keys, I know a site you can check out. That's a hilarious ending. What a journey. Thank you, genuinely, Chris. Not just for this, but for all the effort you put into building CSS tricks in the first place. I can't even imagine how much it hurts seeing something you pour that much effort into and get treated this poorly. I know you know it's not towards you, but that doesn't mean it feels good. And it is clear you're putting the effort in to try and make it hurt less. And uh, I have nothing but respect for that. I hope the site's archived well enough that if something does happen to it, we can still access the resources and maybe repurpose the best ones in other places that are better homes for it. But it's sad that it seems like CSS Tricks is being left to die at Dio. <sighs> don't know what lessons we have here other than be careful who you sell to, I guess. I don't even know if the sale was wrong, though, because he made the money and this risk always exists. <sighs> yeah, this just sucks. That's all I got this time, guys. Uh, let me know how you feel about it, because I'm not feeling great. It is what it is. I'll be careful who I sell the YouTube channel to, I promise. Peace, nerds.